We move on to uh, the next uh, element, which is going to be uh, the background to this. I mean, this looks great and everything, but uh, really we need to bring in uh, some kind of a background that is worthwhile. Um, so I know that I used what, what uh, is called Cardboard Fine um, in my library of really good backgrounds. So um, you just take something that's textured, something that um, has a lot of uh, has a lot of detail in it. I mean, you could really do anything if you have a decent uh, camera. I'd recommend you go out into the world and you start just taking pictures, pictures, pictures of uh, things that you would probably want to use. Um, our text, I want to be bright, so my background will have to be in contrast to that. Um, to make that happen, what we're going to do is we're going to take this. We are going to. Uh, we're not going to use the texture as. Uh, as the texture, we're going to go for new, a new solid. The new solid we want to do is make comp size, make it black. I already have the solids created, but I'm going to make new ones anyway. Um, this goes under this, and what we're doing is we're going to use the cardboard here, um, and we're going to use its luminance to punch holes, basically. Uh, we're going to luma mat. There we go. Um, so what we get are these holes punched in things. Uh, let's go ahead and duplicate this black solid, put it below. Um, this is just a good way to uh, work with the fewest things possible. Um, okay, so this is what we've got so far. Look, we've made like a chalkboard sort of thing. That's fun. Um, so we've got this, which is punching holes in this to reveal this. So far, so good. Um, it actually looks pretty nice as is. I mean, it's not exactly what we made with the other one, but it's pretty nice. Uh, what we're going to do now is use uh, an often not used uh, plugin um, or effect. Um, I feel like playing around with colors. Um, colors that are fun to use. Pink is fun to use. Uh, green, not as fun to use. Um, the blues are quite a bit too harsh for my purposes. Um, so I'm going to want a lighter one, I'm going to want a darker one. Um, basically what you're doing is you're giving yourself the tools you may need to uh, produce subtle color effects to uh, really just bring out some visual interest in uh, your subject. Um, basically what I'm doing here is pushing colors around um, and as you can see it looks okay. Congratulations you've just created a funky background so um, good work. You uh, take those, go ahead, layer, pre-compose, that's your background. Another simple element um, that you're gonna want is uh, you're going to want to bring in the uh, a vignette so new solid make comp size okay um, bring in your elliptical mask different people make these different ways um, this is how I do it I go uh, subtract with this I hit mm 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 I uh, feather it out an appropriate amount and then I jam on the expansion here actually maybe 500 is more of an appropriate amount but uh, there we go a little vignette action going on this will allow you to uh, really class up the place um, let's call it uh, no let's call it this sorry about that um, see <laughs> We're looking classy already. This is good. This is quality right here. Um, so that's that. Fun.
Hey, so far so good. I mean, things are looking good. If you want to really make this pop out a little bit more, add a uh, add a little bit of a drop shadow to it. Um, at this stage, uh, you're going to want to probably increase the distance a little bit. But what this causes is that overall the drop shadow remains uh, consistent and uh, as we get further away, oh, drop shadows further away, and we're close up. Drop shadows close up. So uh, the distance as it's affecting things is important. One thing that the other thing has, that the, uh, the Tim's has that this one doesn't, are some particles. So um, let's go ahead, um, duplicate that. Um, we don't want the mask. We are going to create, create uh, Par par particle world generates this fun time. Ah, it looks so good. Oh man. Um, okay, uh, this is going to be called particle. This is going to be called particles. Um, solid settings. We want it to be white. Um, what we are going to do is mess around in this. Uh, the particle is going to be a uh, lens convex. Basically what we're doing is we are creating circles, lens convexes, circles. I mean, what's the difference between the lens convex and lens concave? Nothing when there's no textual elements textural. Nothing to distort uh, behind them. So. Um, now we've got this crap going everywhere. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, fill up the universe with this stuff. Uh, physics, uh, none. Gravity, none. Uh, just make them. Uh, producer, get that producer going bigger. Try to fill up as much of your frame as possible. Boom! Oh man, it's like I'm birthing the universe. Boom! Uh, I'm so cool. You want to create a nice, rich world for these things to come into. Um, so really get your depth going. This is actually looking okay right off the get-go um, for that. Let's give it a little bit of velocity, like a just to set them going. Boom. So they're kind of moving. Um, However, um, it looks like a camera's flying around, but the particles aren't flying around. Get with the program, Evan. So what we're going to do is, this is where we have a camera. Whoa, copy this camera. Um, paste it in here. What does that mean? Suddenly, this is moving along at the same time. So, oh man. That was really good. So that's why we made the camera in there, and we have basically two cameras, um, but they're they're linked up. So you could write a script um, that links one to the other. That's complicated, and I don't want to do it. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it is what it is. Um, you're gonna want to make these particles uh, blend a little bit better. So uh, change this to add. Boom! So they kind of like blot things out. Um, and that being said, there we go. Makes it makes them nice and hot. Makes them hot. Uh, throw a blur on there. I mean, nothing beats the old fast blur. <laughs> it's fast, but it's good. Uh, there you go. Boom! You know, little, little dots, little universe of dots. Um, so. Ba -boo, ba boo it's a universe of dots. And that is, I think we're pretty much done. I mean, oh, sorry, I forgot uh, one thing. Um, that to populate our universe, we should also have some crap floating around in the universe. Um, let me just grab um, from this project, let's get the orange. Let's get the orange out here. Hey, 
For those of you who like annoying orange, I'm one of them who likes that for sure. Uh, set you down to color dodge. No, sorry, uh, color burn is what we want. Um, opacity down. Uh, prepare to exist in the universe, man. Put it under the text if that's the look you're going for, or over the text. That could be cool. Um, make it 3D so it exists in the universe. Um, I'm going to just position it right in the middle here, so as you can see, it gets pretty abstract at this point. Mm. See that? See that right there? Where the uh, because we set this bad boy to uh, color dodge, um, it had some hot spots in the middle of the uh, the image there that uh, haven't really worked out. Ah, there we go. When you have an error, you can either try to fix it or you can roll with it. I have opted to roll with it. Um, that's wonderful. Um, so now we have one element in our background. Um, uh, time times 10. Um, so basically what we've got going on here is a slowly rotating orange. Let's, let's make it rotate faster. This is taking the time value. Um, so uh, the time value here is 1.15 times 20 is apparently 30 degrees. I don't know how that works. Um, maybe move that back. And you want to give your editing staff, whoever they might be, you want to give your editing staff uh, some room on the back end <laughs> to uh, have space to cut things. You want to give your sound guys time as well. But uh, basically you've created a pretty good thing that is crisp, it's interesting. Um, one of the finer points um, is to make an adjustment layer that'll lay on the uh, some effects pretty well. So you go new uh, adjustment layer. And this is where you can really start to bring some pizzazz to uh, what you've got going on. Um, pizzazz such as uh, force motion blur um, is the sort of thing that you might want to use. Um, it can create a higher quality, although harder to render uh, motion blur than the native motion blur. You could put on some exposure, a little bit of that, um, and offset the exposure to uh, create some interesting effect. Um, crank it up a little bit. Gamma correction. Correct for this Greek gamma. This kind of stuff. Now we're looking like science for real. But um, just make it a little bit hotter in there. Make it hot. Um, that kind of thing. Um, you can do it over individual channels if that's the sort of thing you might be into um, and really give it that uh, hipster doofus appeal my apologies to anyone who uh, thought that was directed at them Gary um, I'm not saying that you're a hipster but uh, this kind of thing probably appeals to you so let's check out that render while I grab another beer from the fridge so I suppose that's it with the text in a spinning universe of stuff. Um, if you have any questions, um, go ahead and leave a comment with what those questions may be, anything you want me to elaborate on. Um, this is posted in several parts, so if you missed one, or if you have a question about that part, it would probably be helpful if you commented in that part instead. And uh, I suppose that's it. Um, check back here later, and I'll probably post some more of these if uh, anyone is at all interested in kinetic typography, motion graphics, or uh, learning how to do any of those slightly better. Um, I'm Evan Abrams, and uh, thanks for spending some time with me. Thanks.